In this video, I'm going to show you all about how to use projects. So let's jump straight into our project.co demo account. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to create new and project. Okay, so this is our create new project page. And the first thing you'll probably notice is that we've got a couple of images at the top. And you can leave those as they are, or you can change where those images come from in your account settings. But in this instance, I'm going to change them. So I've got my edit project image link here. And this is for this image. So what I want to do is I want to open it up and I've got a few options for how to set that image. I could set that image based on a group. I can upload an image. I can add an emoji. I can search on Splash for an image. I can type in a website address and it'll pull an image from the web. Or I can type in a URL if I already have a file online that I want to use. But in this instance, we're going to create a video for a company called Art Creative. We've set up a group for Art Creative, and now we want to use their group logo as the uh, the main logo for the project. So I'll click Art Creative, and you'll see that their logo is set there. Now I want this cover image to match our main project image. So if I go to edit cover image, I could of course upload something, but I'm going to go and see if I can find something that fits on Unsplash. So let's search for light blue text and see what we come across and I think this one will probably fit pretty well yep that looks good okay so now that our project is branded we haven't even created it yet but it's uh, it's branded and ready to go so we could get started as it is or we could start with a template uh, templates are, are starting points for projects, so they include all the tools that you'll need on the project, they include the people, uh, tasks, notes, files, everything that you uh, put into a template will be brought across when you use a template as a starting point for a project. So it's a great way to, to start a project from uh, a, a starting point rather than have to create all those assets new every single time. But in this instance I'm going to start from scratch because I want to show you how to build out a project from scratch. Okay, so let's name our project. I'm going to call this homepage video. I'm going to hit enter and that'll create our project. Okay, so the next thing you'll notice below this as we move down our project view is that we have a range of different data points here. So the first thing we have is our project status and you can set your project statuses in your account settings or the last item in the list here is edit project statuses we can edit our project statuses there as well so if you want to have a custom set of statuses for your project to go through then that's how you set them in this instance I'm going to leave it as active now we have a start date and a deadline. This is great because it means that your projects can show on the project's calendar and scheduler so that you can see when projects started and finished. So in, uh, for this project, I'm going to set the start date of the 1st of uh, August, which is today. And I'm also going to give it a deadline of the 31st of August. That's when we need to finish this project by. Next thing along here is the privacy setting. So we have three privacy settings. The first is the most open, which is account. And that means that this project will be visible to all creators in your account, anybody with a creator role, and it will be uh, visible to any collaborators who have been invited. So only if those collaborators have been invited will they see the project. The next privacy setting down is project. And this is uh, means that the project will be visible to anybody who has been invited to the project. No matter what their uh, account role, they have to be invited to the project to see it. If they haven't been invited, then they won't see this project. It'll be completely invisible to them. And then the final um, privacy setting is the most restrictive. Obviously, it's private and it's only visible to me. So you'll only be able to have yourself on as a user on that project if you've got that privacy setting. In this instance, I'm going to leave it as account. Next thing here, we actually have a custom field on this uh, on, on this project, which is priority. So I'm going to set that as medium. And you can define your custom fields at an account level so that they apply across all projects, tasks, people, groups. Um, and you can set them at a project level so that they apply on all tasks on a project by using that custom fields button. But we do have other videos that cover that, so I'm going to just bypass over custom fields for now. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to actually add groups and invite people to my project. And to do that, I'll click on this groups and people button here. So we know that this is a video for Art Creative. So I want to add Art Creative as a group to this project. 
And when I do add them as a group, it doesn't actually invite all the people from Art Creative to this project. What it does is it adds the group to the project, so it means that I can use filter settings um, later on to filter projects and only see projects that are for Art Creative. So it's really, really a nice way to say, this project is for Art Creative, and then that means that later on I can go and filter and sort and group based on the groups that have been added to a project so that I can see uh, all projects that might be uh, have been made for Art Creative, for example. Okay, then I want to add people to this project. <coughs> So I can click in here. First of all, I want to add the people from Art Creative. So I can click this button, which is only show people from added groups. So it'll only show people in this list that are part of Art Creative. And that's a really nice quick way for me to find those people. So I can click and add those people. And then I want to go and find the other people I want to add from my team. So I want to add Riley, Neymar, Helen, and Hannah from uh, my team. And then I'll click invite to add those people. Okay, now we've got every everybody who we need to be part of the project, we can click on Done Adding Group and People. And you can see that all these uh, groups, oh, the, the group, sorry, and all the people have been added to this project now. When I do add the people, they'll each receive a notification saying you've been invited to a project and it has a link so that they can jump in and see the project. Okay, so now we're getting into the, the real power of projects. We've, we've finished the setup. We've got the uh, branding and the name and the data points and the people. Uh, now we want to sort of set the, set the project up and give it all its information. So uh, first off, let's add a couple of tools. And we can do this using this quick, quick add tools here. So let's quickly add uh, tasks, a discussion, and a files tool. These are common tools that people use on a, on a most regular basis. And then I want to add a description. So I'm actually going to start with a blank description here, although I could use AI to generate a description for me as well. So in here, I'm just going to add a pretty simple description. Uh, this project is to create a video for our client. But of course, you can use the power of the slash command menu in your project description to uh, add information using the AI assistant, format your information. You can add task lists or toggles or images, files, emojis, um, even embeds. You can do a lot in a project description. So I'd give you, I'd, I'd say take a bit of time and explore the slash command menu and see what you can do in your project description because there's an awful lot of information that you can put up front for people to see in your project descriptions. In this instance, I want to keep it a little bit clear so that we can see uh, as much as possible on the screen. Uh, in this video. Okay, so we've added a few tools. We've added tasks and discussion and files, but I do want to add a few more things to this project just to uh, just so that we've got all the tools we need to get going. So if I click into our Add Tools menu here, um, I also want to add a Payments tool, a Time tool, and then I want to come down and I want to add a couple of our third-party tools as well. So the first thing I want to do is want to add our an Airtable base, and this is our marketing assets there we go and we could show a preview of this we could add a description but I'm just going to keep it simple for now and click Save and then I'm also going to add a Google Doc so if I come down here and add a Google Doc so this is the script for this project and then I'm also going to add a Miro board so if I come down here on the mirror board is the customer journey. So there we go. We've added a bunch of different tools, including a number of third party tools. The beauty of adding uh, all the tools to the project is that you can then use every single tool to do what you need to do on this uh, project. So your tasks is a great place to keep track of everything that needs to be done on, on the project. Your discussion is where you can chat with everybody who's part of the project, whether that's the clients, freelancers, your team, everyone can chat together. Files is a collection of all the files for the project so that everything stays in one place. Payments, you can get paid on projects as you as they progress, and time lets you track time on projects. Of course, you've got lots of other 
core tools that you can use, but then there's also third party tools that you can use as well. And in this instance, I've added three. So I just want to show you a few examples here. When you click into uh, an Airtable base, for example, it'll open right within the project. So you don't have to leave the project to go to your third party tools. You can see that you've got uh, your full Airtable base here, and, and this can be reviewed, edited, and changed right within the project. So I can use our breadcrumb navigation to go back to the project. And now I can go to something else, the script, for example, which is a Google Doc. And like I said before, these um, embeds, they can be uh, edited right within the document, right within your project.co project. The beauty of this, like I was going on to say before, is that then you've got your Google Docs, you've got your um, Airtable bases, you've got your Miro boards, you've got your Frame.io, review pages, your box, your Dropbox, your all different third party tools that you use right alongside your tasks and your discussion and your files. So everything for every project is always in one place. So if we click into Miro, for example, you can see our Miro board opens up right within our project here so that we can actually pick things up, move things about and change things right within our project.co project. So you can collaborate in your Miro board right next to where you have your conversation and discuss your project with your team as well. Sorry, so if I just go back to our project here, you can see that we now have our people, our name, our branding, our tools, so the project can, um, we can do everything that we need to do within the project. A few things just to point out before we finish this video. You've got a delete button down the bottom so you can delete the project altogether. That includes all tasks and everything along that goes along with it. You can duplicate the project. So if you've got a project that you'd like to use as a starting point and it's not a template, then you can just duplicate that. You can have a copy of that project. You can convert the project to a template. So if you set a project up really um, just how you like it, then you can actually convert that to a template so you can use it again and again and again. I mentioned before about custom fields, so you can add custom data points to tasks so that you can uh, keep track of the data points that are important to you on each project. Again, like I said, we've got a, another video about that, so uh, please check out the video about custom fields to see how much power that, that feature has. And you can click complete project. When your project's complete, you can mark it as complete, and then it won't show in your lists unless you uh, ask for a, uh, to see a completed projects in your list as well. But most, uh, most lists won't show completed projects by default to keep them nice and clean. Okay, so that is uh, a whistle stop tour about how to use projects. Uh, as always, if you've got any questions, please get in touch with the support team. We'd love to hear from you.